Somebody wants to know why you did Maury like that? Oh, with the drinking? No, he did that to himself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he always wants to drink. And we go through this all around the world. Every time he sees me. He filmed them all the way to the car. It was, it was, yeah, because I, you know, just, I, I didn't even want to do it. You know, I was like, no, don't do this to yourself right now. Like, you know what this is. It's a consistent thing. But I guess because he's the drink champ. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, right. my, that's my dude. The drink champ. Right. Yeah. Do you think confidence brings capital? I heard you say in an interview that you would act more famous than you were to bring awareness to yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Confidence, yeah. The, the energy you put out is the energy you got to get back. So if you put out insecurity, you're going to get some unsure energy. But, you know, if you're confident you are something, you will become it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you really have to believe it 100. You can't be like fake confident. You got to be real. Yeah. And you have to understand what fear and confidence are and where they come from. Right. You know, you have to understand the, the, what, it, what it stems from. Confidence is based on doing something over and over again. It's not like some fake, oh, I'm just confident all of a sudden. And fear comes from what you don't know. That's what, that's when what you have saying. false confidence, that to me is called ego. Ego. But when you're you confident go. based on action, right. factual shit. Yeah. Like for someone to say, yo, are you good at, at calling out hits or music? I could confidently say, yeah, just because of the things I've done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where someone that may have never called out a hit or sold a record <laughs> or anything might be like, I could call it out. But you know, I've never asked you. Support that. Has there ever been a time with your artist, right? <laughs> where you heard something, they were like feeling it. They, everybody's bobbing the air in the studio, and you was like, this is whack. Like, this, yikes. Yeah, I don't know yikes. But I wouldn't be like. Like, you would look around the room and see everybody bobbing, and then you just like. I just would be like the same. <laughs> you like, no, this is not. Well, we used to have this thing in, um, called. Uh, <laughs> like, don't yeah, do that. I forgot, Keep It Real Wednesdays or something. Mm. And producers were coming and bringing their beats. And if they were terrible, they couldn't get mad. You could be like, yo, this, this is bullshit. Right. And that's what it would be. Wow. So I forgot what, what day it was. And that, 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 that definitely hurts an artist. You tell them something they're doing. It can't really hurt because an artist, you know, yeah. they got to put out records and expect everyone to like them. Like, not everyone's going to like your shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's so, rare that you hear a whole album and you just like, every song is dope. I mean, you got some albums like that, but just. Just in general, there's just no one part. There's not not everybody. There's no one product that everyone's gonna love. Yeah, it could be someone's favorite and someone's gonna hate it. Like so, what? Mm -hmm. So as an artist, you have to be able to take both criticism and um, positive. That sounds like what uh, Barry Gordy used to do. They used to get his whole crew together. They would like judge the song based on. He would ask them, "Would you would you buy this song or would you buy a sandwich? Yeah. Which your last dollar?" Yeah. yeah, I mean the music business makes it weird, like because people are kind of you know clued in. Yeah. You have fun. Yeah. You do things funny. So that was like funny to y'all, like to sit around and listen Absolutely. to Cat's piece and you'd be like, Absolutely. and the cat's just really into I'm it. I'm talking about I'd be on the floor laughing hard. <laughs> <laughs> samples that just not I'm clicking. I'm talking about crying. Like, uh, samples are not clicking. Because they come in mad, mad confident. Like, yeah. this shit garbage. And then, you know, the face <laughs> They here. come in looking like, yeah, I got but that But that was body. the rule. Like, the rule right. was you cannot get right. mad. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You know? And so it was just like one of those things you had to be honest with them. Like this, it's just to be honest. So what is the secret to balling? The secret to balling. What is it? You asked me the movie. You asked me about the movie itself. Well, not the secret to balling. The movie. I know what the movie is. Right. But those little things you put up on Instagram. Well, what I'm putting up on Instagram, where I'm talking about just really how to achieve your dreams and achieve your goals. Yeah. You know, and it's all based around this, this, this some spiritual things that people don't understand that is the most important thing to in achieving. That's why I said you being a father. Your mission and like your 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 spiritual mission is to be a great father and a great man to your lady, just a family man. And so what happens is because that is your goal to always remain in your children's lives and, and be a great father. It that's why everything begins to happen for you because it's cause and effect. Everything is based on cause and effect. Yeah, because it's a, the natural law of cause and effect. No one escapes. So it's about like self improvement. Absolutely. Basically. And I only teach natural law. Nobody can debate natural law. Natural law. You can't debate it. The it's, there's the no math. escape from cause and effect. The logic and the math. Every effect has a cause, every cause has its effect. I can that. The law of vibration, emotions, and everything. So, you know, so basically, it's, you know, I talk about those things that matter the most. Because without, without understanding those principles, that's one of the reasons why people have bad relationships with people because they break the law. 
there's a law, there's a spiritual law for everything. And the transgression of natural law is when, if I come in your house and steal from you, that's breaking the law. If I murder you, that's breaking the law. I took your life. So all forms of, uh, th they're all forms of theft when you break the law. When you start doing this, that's when you get really Yeah, everything, yeah. I saw all of this happen. You know, professor, that's when I become the yeah, professor. Yeah, professor. That's when I was like this, like this right here. That was great. That, that pyramid, was, that pyramid. Yeah, but you, you yeah. know, like, you gotta understand what that pyramid is. Two different right? Kenyattas, yeah. like Professor right. Kenyatta. <laughs> the, bar, the barber of. Like this, like this. <laughs> Baba Wawa. Baba Wawa. <laughs> put that name out there, everybody was calling me Barber Walters. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know. Yo, you put that name out there, cats still be called you know, the Barber Walters. So, any other questions? Who does Dane want to connect with or work with before leaving this world? Nice. That's a good question. Elon Musk. Mm. I wouldn't ride by him, you know. Yeah. Work with him some way, shape. Seems like, like an interesting guy. He's always easy. I think he knows somebody from another planet. Mm. He's got a little bunch of secrets, but you know what he's doing is very interesting. Yeah. That, that, I think he's doing the most interesting stuff on the planet right now. What music is inspiring you right now? What have you heard that's really inspiring? I like. I'm listening to Timothy Bloom right yeah. now. I like that a lot. You know, a lot of them listen to is like Tallulah's playlist, so I'm, I'm listening to a lot of top, like her, you know, Tallulah's eight, yeah. whatever she's listening to, I'm listening to. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of, I'm listening, you know, uh, you know, I like the girl Bishop, I think she's dope. Um, Bishop? Bishop, yeah. Bishop Lamont, well, no, Bishop Lamont's a rapper. What, what, what was the, uh, Briggs. Bishop Briggs is a singer, yeah, Bishop is a girl. Um, when you throw the hip hop right now? I'm 45, now, about to be 46 years old. You said you like to try about this. Yeah, but that's, that was like rock and roll. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't get like hip hop first. I get like with my daughter or my son. Like I like the stuff my son is doing because my son. Mm. But uh, unless I like know you, I like I like um, Smoke Dizzers yeah. records, him and the P-Rock Project. Smoke Rock, don't yeah. smoke rock. And that's all live instrumentation. Mm. I like that. I like, um, um, you know. Everyone I hear that I know. Uh -huh. you know. I hear camera stuff, I like it. I like murder mook stuff, you know. But again, I know them, so, you know, Davies, he's, he's trying to kill it. But, you know, again, I, I remember meeting him at the gallery hmm. and stuff. I think, first, Harlem's on, I think Harlem is definitely... First thing that comes to your mind when I say, who's the best rapper you ever heard that made you like, oh my God. It's like, boom. J Electronica. J Electronica. Yeah. Huh. I think J Electronica was pacing to be the heavyweight rap champion in the world. Yeah. Definitely lyrically, I thought he could do it. You know what I'm saying? I believed him. He was supposed to do an album. Yeah. You know, we spent some time. Man, I got records with Jalen Trump. Wow. And you know, he's, a, he's intelligent and he's, uh, he stands behind his point of view. He's, he's, to me, is a real artist. He's not doing it for the money or for the fame at all. Yeah, we can see that, yeah. But his records are, pff, he could rap. Yeah. And he's a funny dude, very clever guy. Hmm. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, somebody wants to know, would you consider, or what are your thoughts on the business, um, sports management business? I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to really do too much, but I got to be in the dude's locker room. And, huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you dudes, you know, maybe some girl tennis players or something. I'm, I'm just not inspired to make money off other people anymore. I would like to buy a team, you know, and have fun doing that. But as far as managing people, that's just making money off other people is too draining. Yeah. You know, that's just nothing I want to do. And, you know, like if they do something that hurt themselves, you got to really be mad because you lost money, you lose money. Like, it's just too much responsibility to put on somebody else for my existence. So, I don't know. I, I find that, like, sports, I like being a fan a little better. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'll do, I'll do it just to do it, like, when I, when I was promoting fighters, yeah. but it made me start to hate the sport because the business was so like, you know. You saw the inside. The inside. I just didn't agree with the way yeah. the business was run. So it was just making, it was making me better. The fabric did, it, it didn't I, agree with and you. And I love boxing. Same thing with music. You know, once the business started to become, like made me hate the, 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 the art, I don't want to really do it anymore. You know what I'm saying? And, or I'll do it where I love it and only the way I love it. I, I'm only doing it on my terms, you know, and I'm going to fight hard to make sure that it happens. Might not mean it's as big, pause, but at least it's exactly what I want it to be. 
when you had when you when you had Future Sound, what was your what was your job with Future Sound? I was the manager. Get them a deal, get their album made, make sure they got promoted, make sure they were on tour, you know, make sure they had money and everything. It was like being their dad. But being a manager is like I being a dad. I bought that single back in, when I was in North Carolina. It was crazy. What's a bro to do? Time that beat was hard. Yeah. 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 Who did that beat? Ski? Future Sound. Oh, okay. Future Sound was dope. Yeah. You know, we got it together and they would have stayed. They, I think the future sound could have been impactful, like Tribe. Yeah. yeah. But they were interesting and their perspective on things was dope. Right. See, like that might be like something I might write about. Yeah. No one really knows about future sound. And yeah, like flavor. the original, like what you were really doing at that time. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I know what's the name was telling me uh, when I was talking to uh, Steve Rifkin, he was telling me when he first met you, that was an interesting story. Like, see, that that's that's movie worthy to me. Like, you walking in someone's office and He's like, man, this dude, this dude, Dane, walked in my office confident, cocky. He was like, yeah, I need a deal. Like, you know what I'm saying? I need, you telling him you're making demands on what you need. And now that I'm 45 or 46, going on 46, it would really be interesting to see somebody doing what I was doing at that age. Because I definitely was really young with that perspective. Mm -hmm. And for me, I thought it was normal, you know? I mean, I knew I was abnormal, but I didn't know how crazy it was to be so young and so clued in on business. Right. But um, I would definitely love to see another Dame Dash. You know what I'm saying? Like another 21 year old, 22 year old, like that, yeah. to move like that. Yeah. And, yeah. I would love to see that. Nice. Yeah. Any question? You got one. It would change if there was another Dame Dash. The world would be different. Hmm. What would you suggest when your spouse is more content at working? and you're more of an entrepreneur. Then you get the business and let her work for you. Yeah. You know, create the business and let her be your employee. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Build it up, keep doing what you're doing, you know. Build the business, you're the entrepreneur, yeah. let her hire her. Yeah. And make her a boss. Don't make it a problem, because it's not an issue. don't make it a problem. My parents did that, or my mom yeah. did it to keep insurance. So yeah, like yeah, because that's not a problem. Yeah, it's just got to build the business up and get it stable enough to where she can come work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give her a job. Yo, this is Kenyatta with Hip Hop Motivation. First of all, I want to tell everybody out there, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to our YouTube page. And if you haven't liked, comment or subscribe to our YouTube page. Make sure you do so. Stay in tune. We have a lot more to come. Peace. When are you writing a book, Dave? I'm writing it. I also have a book. You know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, I What's it called? It's mm -hmm. called Culture Vultures. I did. If you, have you ever looked at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, like, absolutely. The, so, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written. He wrote it. We we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways. So it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. It's a series. The fashion game. Culture Vultures, the book. Okay. In business, Dame is a guy that's worn many hats. Yo, you can either think of a master plan or get mastered by somebody else's plan. Check it. As a barber, one of the most important life lessons I learned is to never do anything without seeing the ending result first. Before I understood the value of seeing results, I used to waste a lot of time sometimes doing double work because I didn't have a vision of where I was going. Then I started taking consultations more serious by not even turning on my clippers until I had a clear understanding of the result my client was planning to see. And in turn, it became easier to achieve the style they wanted to see in half the time. Real talk, the most successful barbers and beauticians are the ones that see the ending results before they start any service. Write, Write this, this down. Write this before down. making any moves, know where you're going. Deciding from thoughts of being sick and tired of something, starting something, or admiring something can be the emotions that fuel change. Because write this down. Emotion leads to passion, passion leads to action, and action leads to results. Word up. Question, what's the number one killer of dreams? If you said fear, you're wrong. Fear is on the list, but it's not the number one killer. The number one killer of dreams is comfort. 
the comfort of a good paying job, or in an active relationship can seduce us for many years into the rhythm of accepting things without making any moves to change, further numbing us into a state of zombie-like passiveness. Write this down. Passiveness will cause your dreams to pass you by. Thinking about something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 